Hello and thanks for joining us. My name's Ian Stroud. And my name is David Malone, and this is Hyperland. What are we talking about today? Well, uh, I know I've been threatening for a little while to want to talk about the elections, and every time I do, you get this look of fear in your eyes. But it's not—it's not fear. I just—they uh, glaze over. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, fair enough. Not fair um, at all, mate. I've, I've 50, how old am I now? 56, 57 years of, yeah, all right. Well, do, I, you, do, you, do you, you're willing to have a go? Yeah, oh, no, no, I'm I'm always happy to talk about the imbeciles, but, um, yeah, yeah, let's, let's. All right. <laughs> I'll tell you what, uh, what has got my goat is this, um, this mantra that every Every political result, every election, yeah, everything is always. There's been a swing to the right. I've said before there isn't a left and a right. I mean, why do we keep? Yeah. Well, I mean, I agree with you. I mean, I think there is a left and a right. Uh, there there is, yes, yes. But I, I, I don't think it's the most important thing, and I don't think it's no. what's really governing no. people's political decisions anymore. I, wish, I just think that's looking at the modern world through a pair of specs that were already old when Charles Dickens was writing. <laughs> <laughs> but when you've spoken in the past about kind of like people have these principles and they stick to it and they don't want to change it because if they change that, then the house of cards yeah. falls on the floor and, and, yeah. and they get yeah. upset. And, he, you know, like I looked at the UK elections, just happened, and everyone's been whinging about the Conservatives have been in power for 14 years and mm. they've completely messed it up. And I put part of that down to the political system that we've got in electing people, the first past the post. Mm -hmm. And I would, one thing that I looked at before the vote was, well, who who's talking about that? And, yeah. and um, I might I might back them. And I found and was out, anyone? I think the only, uh, the, the Farage party, I think, were the only ones who were talking. Well, if you think about it, and, and you know, it's it's a slightly different point, but I do think now that Labour have come to power, mm -hmm. if the, the mess that we're in now is a consequence of 14 years of the Conservative Party, I would sort of say, Labour, you can't let that happen again. Mm. Therefore, I think in this term, you should do something about the electoral system. The only party that have really gone on about, on about it in the past have been the Liberal Democrats, and of course, they've and done... And the Greens. Greens have gone on about it forever. Right, OK. They, they didn't say quite so much this time. Yeah. Mainly because they did have some other policies they wanted to talk about, which is, uh, which is good. Yeah, good. No, I mean they, they they've done they got four seats. They did. Yeah. So, th yeah, so they quadrupled. Yes. If they were just one. And Farah's got five. Was it five? I thought it was four. Okay, I thought it was five. four, but then I was corrected. There, there was a late count or something, and apparently they got oh. five. I don't. I, I, four or five, uh, uh, but right, yes, no, no, I, I believe you. But I I do think that that something should be done about it. Well, the thing is, the Labour Party had never been hot on it because they always think to themselves, we are the only other party that gets past the post first. Yes. So they don't want to. And my guess is that, well, I'd be surprised if we hear much from them about re changing the electoral system. Oh, no, do. so do I, but I think they should. Yeah, but I don't think they will. Um, no, I don't. <laughs> I also take, I mean... I, this, it's the result of 14 years of Tory rule. Mm -hmm. Well, in one sense, obviously that's true, because they've been making oh, decisions you, for 14 I, you're years. You're heading in another direction. <laughs> well, all I'm saying is that that the Labour Party, the government, the Labour government we had before yeah. the Tories laid the foundations oh, for okay. a lot of the stuff yeah. that the Tories went on. They were the ones who were in power I, I, while... I thought we you were, were incubating the financial crisis. And yeah. Gordon Brown was the one who said, let's bail out all the banks and not ask any questions. I thought you were and, going into a different direction. 
Well, I will. I just wanted to get that off my chest. No, no, but I, in terms of I've got another thing to get <laughs> I thought go you on, were going to I thought you go were going to nail on. it. Um, in terms of... Uh, you hear a lot of people sort of saying, oh, not on my watch, and, and oh, this can't happen. And, and actually, some of the failure of the last 14 years has been the lack of a party that stood up to the Conservative Party. Yeah, I think that's true. I mean, I, I look at the Labour Party and I'm afraid I am one of those people who thinks that it's uh, Rory Light. I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I yeah. could understand people, and uh, I did dither in the uh, in the voting booth, uh, and looked. <laughs> I did look at Labour candidate, um, and but Keir Starmer's a Blairite. Yes, and yeah, so, and, and so is the cabinet that he's just thrown together. Yeah. They are I mean, all I think, people. I that... think, yeah, bring Ed Miliband back. Mm, okay, has he brought David Miliband back? There was some yeah. <laughs> chatter about. It. Has he actually? I, I haven't. I haven't. I haven't no, I'd, I'd, no, I haven't seen David Miliband back. But. I mean, David Lammy is good. Yeah, he's got he's, he's got yeah. a few skeletons in his closet. A few things he needs to work out. I think he needs to go and see a therapist about one or two points. Um, <laughs> but otherwise, clever bloke. Good. Seems I great, I, but... I think since they've got elected, though, I, I have been surprised. I'm I'm warming somewhat. I was you... yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm I mean, I'm more positive than I was before the election. Okay, yeah, well, fair enough. I'm I mean, trying I, to be I, optimistic. I, yeah, well, I really hope that they do actually do something different. I mean, it, it's not so much what they're going to do. If they say, you know, we're going to hire, we're going to build new schools or we're going to build new hospitals, that's great. I mean, I don't know any political party that says they're going to, you know, knock down some schools or knock down yeah. hospitals that they're always going to everyone's always going to improve the nhs everyone's always going to improve the education system okay the question is how are they going to how they're going to do it and if they're going to build all these new hospitals through public private finance then it's privatization by the side door yeah yeah, yeah because yeah. sure they'll say it's a nhs hospital sure which we're going to pay a private enterprise for for 30 something yeah, years that's, that's something just, that, vastly over the rate of inflation that just hasn't worked it, i mean we've seen no. it mm, and and i was talking to people the, not exactly inside the party but who are quite well placed saying yeah it is going to be it's they're not going to call it pfi obviously yeah but it'll be something like that and so i think well there you go that's tory light sure yeah, i'm, yeah, I'm yeah. glad they're going to build more hospitals i'm glad they're going to hire more teachers but if they're going to do it by um, putting us in hock for 30 odd years to private finance, eh, it's privatization by the side door. Yeah. And, and what's the big deal? I mean, it's better than not building hospitals and not hiring teachers, granted. But it's just further entrenching a, a Tory like vision of a neoliberal capitalist yeah. answer to everything, which I don't think will work. It didn't work when Tony Blair was doing it, it didn't work with. Gordon Brown was doing it. It hasn't worked since. Who didn't Other it work for? Because it, it hasn't worked for anyone. Mm, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I, don't, I think it has worked. For, well, certainly the last fourteen years seems to have favoured some people over others. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, of course, yeah. of course. You know, if you're the rentier class, if you're the ones who are getting paid, then you're just uh, sitting back on your, you know, yeah, your beachfront property, listening to the gold coins go tinkle, tinkle, tinkle into your bank account for doing nothing. That, well, that's what PFI is about. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, let's talk about. Um, I, anyway, I'll, yeah, no, I was going to say. Uh, yeah, I was going to say the um, the left of the left have finally mm -hmm. taken uh, not control, but have won in France after a exactly. fear of the uh, the right mm -hmm. getting it. Well, I think it's just a very interesting result. I mean, I personally think that the first round result was the most interesting. I think the second round result when all the sort of centre-left <laughs> parties said, we Ooh, mustn't let... Shit, look what's sorry. coming! <laughs> yes, exactly. I mean, uh, you know, they, 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 they clubbed together and they said, we mustn't let um, Le Rassemblement National, um, um, you know, Le Pen's party get in. Yeah, 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 I'm glad you said that, yeah. It now remains to be seen 
whether these people can actually form a government because they violently disagree on a whole most things. Yeah. Other than they don't like Marine Le Pen <laughs> or, or, or Bardella. Um, so, I, yeah, it remains to be seen. I think they'll cobble something together, but I don't think it lasts. I think France, French's, France's politics might end up looking a bit more like Italian politics for the next couple of years. Yeah. But what I, what I wanted to talk about was this, as I said, this, this, this mantra that the best way to understand what's going on in politics in here, in Europe, in Germany, in France, in America is a turn to the right. Mm -hmm. the new, I just, I, is it this, this the new right that they're talking about? Yeah, but I, I, it doesn't seem to me to fit the evidence. I mean, let's look at what happened in France. So the first round, the two massive big gainers were um, Marine Le Pen's RN party, Rassemblement National. Yeah. All right. But the second largest gainer was the, the French Greens. Oh, who right, are okay. Further to the left than any of the centre parties. So, how does that fit the narrative that what we're seeing is a swing to the right? If what we saw was some people swung further to right and a yeah. whole lot of other people swung decisively further left, that doesn't, you can't explain that by saying, oh, it's a swing to the right. Yeah. It seems to me that the, the narrative which fits the evidence more closely is not that this is a swing to the right. It's a rejection of the middle. So yes, yes. If, if, you're, if you're in the middle and you're vaguely to the right of the middle, like in, in English terms, you're a Lib Dem. So you're in the middle, but you're sort of on the right. And you want to reject the middle. Where do you go? Do you vote left? Well, no, you, you vote a little bit further to the right. Yeah. Yeah. If you were in the middle but vaguely to the left, and you want to reject the middle, where will you go? Well, a little bit further to the left. But isn't isn't that what you see? That people who wanted to reject the middle, they moved and voted reform. They moved further right. People in the middle who were vaguely left and wanted to reject the middle, they voted green. Yeah. And so, and and I think England. Britain is still the outlier in European politics because we we still haven't actually fully rejected the middle. We rejected the Tory party. Yeah, but yeah. The bulk of Tory voters moved to the Lib Dems, which resurrected that corpse in an altogether miraculous way. Um, it's still a corpse in terms of any ideas, but they just got this great big flood of disillusioned Tory voters who couldn't bring themselves to vote anywhere else. But this swing to the right mantra, yeah. what it strikes, I mean, A, it doesn't fit the fact that reform gets a gets five MPs up from nothing, but the Greens come up from, from one to four, having never, ever got any further than one. And that's, you know, that's with the, you know, our former leader, um, having stood down in her seat. So there's a big move out of the centre. And, and it just seems so clear that that's what the evidence is saying. And if you look at France, it's it's in that first round, it's it's even more stark because you get a huge number of people voting for Rassemblement National and a huge number voting for the French Greens. And it's the centre parties that everyone just says, no, thank you. Yeah. And so then you think, well, why do we keep hearing this, oh, it's a, it's a turn to the right? And it seems to me it's because that narrative skips over any disillusionment or failure with the the politics of the centre and just says, oh, no, it's not that we've done anything wrong. It's not that people don't like what we've done. We're wonderful and, and our way of seeing the world is still <laughs> wonderful and no one's disagreeing with it. It's just unbeknownst, sort of in, in the sub-basement of European psyche, they've all been turning into racist Nazis and moved to the right. It's a very convenient narrative, which yeah. says, "Oh, the centre politics didn't didn't fail. People have just moved to the right." Whereas and my narrative, which it seems to me, obviously, does fit the evidence more closely. What it says is, it's not that people moved to the right; they just looked at the centre and its politics of the last twenty years and said, "This is oh, absolute yeah. bollocks," and moved out. And 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 where did they go? Those on the right moved to the right. Those on the left moved to the left. And those on the right point at the people on the left and go, they're all Marxists. 
<laughs> right, right. And I mean, even in Germany, you who would the ASF? Yeah, the what was a uh, Ford for Germany? Is it AFD? Is that what it's AFD, called? AFD, AFD. That's it. right. And so th th they got a, they've always been well represented in the East. But the other big gainer, which um, is weird, I mean, it, and it's it's not a vast movement, but I just think it's interesting. There's this um, woman called Sarah Wagenknecht, and my apologies to the <laughs> Wagenknecht family because I probably masked her name. Now, she used to be uh, the co-chair of the left, the Linke, the, the left party in Germany. She was co-chair. Yeah. And then she left because she she is left-wing, but she um, broke ranks with the, 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 the mantra of the left. And she has spoken out saying, I don't think that um, uh, we sh she, she's less keen on immigration uh, and she has mm. worries about immigration and refugees. And she's seen as a populist, yeah. but a very left-wing populist. Yeah. And her, her she founded a party, which basically is just the Sarah Wagenknecht party. She, she founded an alliance in 2023, yeah. uh, which basically had left-wing nationalist populists, Eurosceptics, socially conservative um, people, and also a whole bunch of sort of quite prominent scientists and whatnot. And she founded this, and then she went on to found her own party, and it took a lot of votes from De Linke, yeah, but stays left. So again, in some sense, you see people voting for her, yeah, and she's left wing, more Eurosceptic, not in favour of of um, the sort of open borders version of Germany, yeah. And the AFD on the right, and again, how, how do how do you square that with it's just a move to the right? It, it, I, I, I think that, yeah, no, what, what you're sort of saying is it's kind of like when I sort of said there isn't a left and a right in politics. Mm. There is an extreme left and an extreme right, but the thing is, there seems to be some things that people are turning to that would have been described as right, which mm -hmm. yes. And when but, you I mean, when well when you talk about the sorry sorry I'm just um I'm, go ahead you you slightly confused me by calling them the Green Party are you talking about the New Popular Front is that the well, Green in Party Germany. in France uh pass sorry I don't know I just know them as the French Greens but whether they've got another name or not I don't know right okay yeah I was just um, trying to think oh, not really heard of that. The, the 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 one that got um 182 seats or something was the new popular front ensemble got 168 and the oh yeah but that that yeah i mean you mean in the second round yes right well i mean you've got the centrist parties who got polaxed yeah you've got you've got marine le pen's party on the right and then this other thing is just basically all of the non-centrist parties who are vaguely yes, okay, to the left, right, yeah. plus the extreme left, just all got together. Yeah. And when we extreme left, when we say extreme left, yeah, I, I don't like this you know, extreme, extreme right, extreme left. The, the, the extreme left is the old French Communist Party, yeah. which used to be run by a man called Marché. Um, <laughs> who, oh, I like Marché. I mean, Marché, was, he, he was handicapped because he, he had that sort of pro-Kremlin 1950s thing, which a lot of the French um, European communists did. But I've seen him debate with Jacques Chirac and others. Yeah. And he was great. He 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 was the sort of um, uh, Nigel Farage of the left of his time. Yeah. In the sense that he just went and said it, and and everyone went, oh, "Did he really say that?" Um, <laughs> he was he was really rude to people. And I remember on some debate, it's an old black and white debate. I think it was with Chirac, a young Chirac. I think I wouldn't swear to that. Yeah. And and they're there, you know, and there's the compare in the middle, and this is a political, you know, mid evening debate. And let's say it is Chirac. I hope it is, otherwise his family will sue me probably. Um, <laughs> says his bit, and then they turn to Monsieur Marché, and Monsieur Marché says something, and I'm just roughly translating. He says he looks at the compare, looks at Chirac, and says, "Look, I I take no pleasure in saying this, but Monsieur Chirac is one of the." least principled, most unpleasant, slippery, devious, unpleasant, lying, um, uh, immoral people I've ever had the misfortune to have to sit nearby. 
That's pretty. Indeed. <laughs> wow. Okay. Let's get on with the debate then. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, the extreme left is the French Communist Party. Why? Yeah. Why, is this, why does this word extreme come in? Except to sort of say it's, it's not beyond censored. the pale. It, it's, yeah. it's, it's no longer allowed. Yeah. That it, I mean, extreme. It's dangerous. Extreme sport. Extreme left. Extreme right. I used to think, well, yeah, there was the French Communist Party. I think a lot of what they said was nutty. Um, and then there's extreme, you know, there's right-wing parties and like the, you know, the British National Party or the, and I think they're nutty. Yeah. But why, why, why this word extreme? Where does it creep in? What, what good is it doing other than to sort of put a verbal, one of those police barriers, you know, police barrier do not cross. That seems to be what it's for. Yeah, and and I I don't like it, and I and I I really don't like the way this narrative of the swing to the right seems to me to be to make people not think that anyone has rejected the thinking of the centre, which it seems to me that is the one clear message that has come out, which the narr the, the those who guard the centre narrative, you know, all of the mainstream media. They're just not willing to entertain that notion, so they're just not willing to write about it in those terms. Because yeah. no one's willing to admit that the 14 years, more than 14 years, the, the agreed upon center, globalist, neoliberal, open market policies, which stretch back to Tony Blair, if not back to Thatcher, have failed. Yeah. But that's just the one thing that no one's allowed to to admit to. And so they come up with every other possible reason why people have voted as the way they have. And the one they've settled on is they're all racist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. it is funny, but it's also dangerous. I just feel like we're, we're not having the grown-up debates we really need to have. Yeah. You know, oh, Macron's no. living in a la-la land, a dangerous one. Yeah. Anyway, that's what I wanted to say. Do you think I'm potty, or do you think there's something to what I've said? No, I, 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 I think there is. I think, I think the extreme left and the extreme right. I, th I agree. They're both that sort of they're perceived as being dangerous. I think mm. talking about the extreme left, I think for for me personally, I would say there are two extreme lefts. There is the extreme left where you're maybe looking at what Corbyn was doing, what the Labour Party stood for in the eighties. That's extreme left. Well, I, I I think it's it's to sort of counter. No, no, that's what I'm sort of saying. I I think there's two extreme lefts, and I think that the word extreme is put in front of left to say it's not centre left. It's not the Labour Party. Yeah, I mean, I think you're right. That everything outside of the centre, yeah, is, is, is extreme, extreme right and extreme left, and yeah, and and I I think it's I mean the, the danger oh, is you, you most clearly you see in in Germany where they they were actually talking about let's just have a legal ruling to make uh, AFD forward for Germany whatever it's called yeah. illegal, yeah, despite the fact that mm, nearly yeah. half of the electorate in East Germany voted for them or will vote for them and yeah. i just think are you going to take people with you if you on the one hand just say well your thoughts your political party everything you think we're just going to say it's illegal you can't do that you can't even think that anymore never mind vote for them or do you yeah. have to say can we really sit down and explain to me what your fears are explain to me what it is that's propelling you to this politics and let me see if there's something i can do about it Surely that's the better yeah. solution, the yeah. only sustainable one. Um, and yet that's the one that even suggesting that you invite someone to stick the label extreme on you. Yeah. And I find that that's what makes me more worried by the centrist thought police than by the people who have genuinely nutty views on the left and the right well it, it's it's uh, what I, can, worries I, me. Can, I can yeah i can ignore the people the nutty people on the left and the yeah. right i don't have to vote for them 
But the thought that the centrist thought police are going to come ha- come to my house and somehow, yeah, that I find that more worrying. Mm. But yeah, maybe that's just me. No, no, I I I, I totally think you know that, that I listened to something the other day about the freedom of speech and and basically the freedom of speech means accepting the most opposite view of your your own and yeah. being able to listen to it without saying you're Marxist, you're a Nazi, you're racist, you're a paedophile. Yeah. You're, you know, I mean, these words are just sort of thrown around um, because yeah. there's, there isn't an intellectual debate on it. So no, and- so when I was talking about the, sort of the extreme left, I would sort of say there's an extreme left, exactly what you're talking about, is this sort of dangerous extreme left, oh, it's terrible, and then there's an extreme left that isn't the Labour Party as it is now. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then the other I, thing is, is how we started this, and I was just saying that I think this, the, a lot of people would say that our political system's not working, and who is looking at that? Well, Farage is, and of course he's looking at it because it will help mm-hmm. his party. It's not going to help Labour. It's not going to help the Liberal Democrats get more seats now, so they won't talk about it. But I do think we need. Does, does that mean I support Nigel Farage? <laughs> further from the truth um yeah but i but i can't i feel it's difficult to talk about it because i'll instantly be told that i'm a, a right-wing fascist mm. fascist yeah but it, surely the failure is the is on is on the side of those people who have just said there are a whole range of topics we refuse to talk about and anyone that even tries to well talk you can't about, yeah, we'll just you, we'll just stick a label on them that shuts them up no, you, you, and and you so then that. what that happens is so all of the correct thinking um, progressives who are, i see as in the center <laughs> i don't see them i don't left. see them as in the well they're, they're, do you think they're, they're left wing i i think i think the um i think the press would describe them as left and i think the 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 extreme rights would describe them as extreme left okay but, I, but well, I, I'm, 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 I'm the odd man out because no, no, I don't I, see them as left. I don't see them as left at all. Are we I talking about the same thing? It's the same people then? Are we talking about people who call themselves progressives? Right. Okay. Um, but it seems to me the the fault lies with them because there are issues that need to be talked about, yeah. and whether you like to talk about it, whether you think it's somehow unsavory to talk about it and we're talking about immigration and race and working conditions and all the rest of the stuff that gets tied up that Farage likes to talk about yeah he at least talks about it and surely the best thing to do is from someone from the left or the progressives to talk about it as well and say okay what is it that you're worried about are are the worries real can we really engage in a proper conversation yeah um and they don't. I mean, they. Well, we keep. I've, yeah, I've we, actually had the beginnings of debates with people who call themselves progressives, and I had the beginning of a conversation with one of the Labour Party's um, policy wonks. And uh, as soon as we got onto this territory, and I said a couple of things which were outside of his narrative, which he knew were also true because I could give him the citations, but yeah. he disappeared. Conversation was terminated. And that's the problem. Because yeah. then the only people who are still talking about it are Nigel Farage and his friends. And if they're the only people talking about it, can you really blame people yeah. for listening? Because they want to talk about it, and he's the only one talking about it. Well, I, 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 so, couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't understand why we've been talking about small boats as being a kind of major problem that everyone's wants sorting out. Am I, am I the only one who... <laughs> People like, are concerned about immigration, whether you think they should be or not. Yeah, well, surely, so surely the thing to do is to 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 get to the bottom of what they think is going on, what yes. you think is going on. Well, that's what you think. Whether you think there's high levels of immigration or low levels of immigration, whether you think it's good or it's bad, or and well, actually have that debate. And there are plenty of things you can talk about. Yeah. Well, but for, they're uh, not. They're for, being for, shut down by people just saying, "Well, we can't talk about it. you're a racist for trying." And I think that's. No, no, no. Well, I, I, I'm, yeah, I'm not. Again, it's the difficult thing of of. I'm not. I'm not in support of 
the small boats coming across as opposed to yeah that's I, 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 think, I, th I think there's a, a world of political nuance and complication and genuine concerns yeah which need to be brought out to the light and in a proper grown-up debate allowing people to to voice their fears and their concerns and to advance what they think supports their view of these concerns and actually have a proper debate but we haven't had one in yeah decades i, I, I decades. think i think the the yeah to explain it a bit clearer than i think people are pointing at the small boats mm -hmm. in the hope that we don't talk about housing and then we we don't talk yeah. about the failing infrastructure yeah i mean for me that that seems to be the bigger problem which is why every time i've heard people going on about small boats i'm going I, the 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 horse and the car the wrong way around i don't understand i mean if you because we've talked about sort of doing something about immigration for a, it's a very dangerous topic to talk about i know i know i, I mean i, I kind of it should be well it should be or it shouldn't be it should be talked about oh yeah no no <laughs> I did, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it does. My my head's exploding because I'm thinking about the. Uh, you, you like Jordan Peterson, not necessarily mm, I, support I, I, everything, I, I, but I, I, you're no, aware of not. Him. Of so, course, I am, and I th I think some of the stands he took, particularly early on, yeah, just saying I, I don't like the thought police telling me what I may or may not say. Yes, I'm trying to force force him to say things. I I. I listened to those early things he said, and I thought, yeah, I think yeah. you should be able to say what you want to say. And you know, and you got to that whole big debate about it, 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 does it offend people? And and I I I I wouldn't. I don't think I would get on with him if I sat in a room with him. But I don't think he's an idiot. No, I, I, I don't know. I, I think don't I... think from <laughs> what I've seen, and I only see him like everybody else on the clips. I don't think he's a malign, malicious person. No. Um, well, talking about a, a sort of immigration and one of the issues we've got, well, his last guest that I heard on his show was um, a guy called Tommy Robinson. Oh, Tommy Robinson, yeah, yeah, a, a, a hate figure. Yes, in this country, yeah. But this, this, and again, and and I, I listened to it all, and uh, Tommy Robinson explained it was it was the um, the incident that had happened in Huddersfield with a Syrian refugee child. Mm -hmm. I won't go yeah. into all of it, but. Um, yeah, he, he's he's the figure that's put up as extreme right, and we should all hate him. Oh, he's a nasty man, and he, you know, he he explained it, and I was, I was, not. He's an interesting and complicated figure, and you have to go back to the beginning of when he started to get involved. Yeah, to you're talking about the grooming it. gangs and things like that. the grooming gangs, which according to the Liberal press don't exist. Yeah. Um, but uh, this is this is immigration. This is where this is where taken taken well, it overlaps with it, but it's not the same thing as immigration. I, I no, no, no. But it's these used are by such important and difficult questions. And all I know <laughs> is sweeping them under the carpet and then isn't sticking helping. a kind of isn't... a police cordon sanitaire around it, saying if you even look over there, you're in trouble. Yeah, is just not the way to conduct politics. And and I. Well, I, can, I just I, I I fear that they're incubating far larger problems than the one than than we would have if we got down to having yeah. the uncomfortable fractious debate that needs to happen. Yeah. Yeah. But whether we talk about all of these things on the podcast depends how quickly we want to get prisoner, I suppose. <laughs> 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 well, one of the things that came out, and and actually, it's I think it's worth listening to uh, the Peterson, uh, Tommy Robinson, um, mm. was that he's been made bankrupt by one point four million quid or something like that, mm. um, by yeah. the courts. So yeah. the less we say, because I am, <laughs> I haven't got one point four. Yeah, uh, it, it's also just disturbing that. Uh, uh, I mean, has he done something criminally wrong? Did he libel someone? I mean, British libel laws are terribly, terribly draconian. That's why people mm. like to take people to court over libel in this country as opposed to other countries. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, obviously, I've had to pay a lot of attention to libel laws because I wrote a lot of things during the... Um, 
a financial crisis and I had to be careful I wasn't libeling someone. You got a few phone calls, though. I did, and I got threatened here and there, yeah. um, but luckily not by people's lawyers, and usually by their PR agents. And as soon as they, you know it's the PR agent, you relax, because if yeah. they've sent the PR agent, it's because the lawyer said there was nothing to do. <laughs> but I, but I, I, I do worry that you can use those laws to bankrupt people just to close down yeah. people you don't like. Um, yeah, it's the, it's it's a it's, it's another a slippery version. slope, isn't it? Well, it's how different is it to? I mean, we would all hate it if some whistleblower says, you know, Boeing has done something wrong, and then Boeing, um, this is just allegedly, um, <laughs> um, would use Don't its bring deep, up deep pockets. <laughs> they would use their deep pockets yeah. to silence said whistleblower, yes. and we would all go, "That's terrible." Yeah. But then but, two whistleblowers it, in Boeing it, it, died, didn't they? Was it two? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But is it how does it make it better and all right if the deep pockets are on the side of some political viewpoint? Yeah. And they're used to silence someone who has a different political viewpoint. That makes me feel queasy. And it's related to it's the more sort of legal version of something which Jordan Peterson in his early incarnation, and I, I haven't really followed it, so I, I'm not sure where he's gone or what he's yeah. done. But I don't, the, the whole business about you've upset me or you've triggered me or this offends me, it just seems so dreadfully close to blasphemy laws. Mm. You know, in other words, you know, and it was the whole, um, uh, what the name of that French magazine? Um, oh yes, Charlie Hebdo. Yes, business. I understand people were very upset, or satanic verses. People were very upset, but I was going to use the life of Brian, or, mate. It's safer, safer or, ground. Or life of Brian. Yeah, life of Brian's another good one. But in the life of Brian, I saw the interview where we had the Archbishop. Or, yes. No, it wasn't. It was Malcolm Mugridge who came on. It was two Malcolm Mugridge, was it? Yeah. And 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 um, John Cleese was on there. And and basically, what got played out is John Cleese saying, "Look, mate." We, we fought this business about blasphemy about 300 years ago, yeah. a bit more, 400 years ago. We've done that. And I... There is a I tinge would, of that. There is a I would, flavor there of There is. I, I, I hate, you know, okay, if, 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 if a Muslim is offended, I don't want to go out of my way to offend them. But I don't think you can say, because I've been offended, this is now legal, because that is... A return to blasphemy. And no, but equally, equally, laws. I shouldn't be able to turn around to you and sort of say, "Well, David, you sound as if you're racist. If you've said something, yeah, derogatory, or, or about... just, or just someone who's triggered because you know someone said something about gender politics or something or other, and they don't like it. Well, maybe this person was an arsehole for what they said. <laughs> That's fine. I understand, and we can all say, "Mate, you're an arsehole," and yeah. not listen to them, yeah. and just not pay any attention to them, and let them witter on in their corner. But I really don't think we should be using the law no, to say, no. if I'm offended, triggered, whatever it is, that we should use the law to say that you can't say this anymore. Yeah. Because it just is the secular version of blasphemy laws. And I hope people aren't wanting to go back to that. Well, there that was... A, the, yeah. To, the, the, well, there, there yeah. was in... in um, um, big fan of... Formula One, and there was a driver that was going out, and he described another driver that cut in front of him as a retard, and he got fined for it. So there are words that that offend me. There's words that I don't like to use or or to hear. But I'm not going to start either physically threatening people or legally threatening people, or using deep pockets to yeah. Do what corporations have always done, which and is even if you're you. not in the right, yeah. you, you can be gagged because we could keep you in court for 25 years and not notice it on our bottom line, but you'll be bankrupt after five minutes. Yeah. So we win. Mate, you're going to have to listen to all this back and just double check. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, It's taking I, us into a different place than I thought we were going. I was going to well, talk I've, about the American um, elections. Well, that, but, I mean, that's just good. that is that's going to be the 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 center point of all of this, isn't it? Because, well, we we sort of know, said they they toyed with making it illegal for him to run, yeah, and their cases 
fell apart because what he was guilty of, and he was guilty of it, they weren't they weren't federally important laws for which incarceration is the recommended. They were sort of, you know, as people at the time said, normally you wouldn't even recommend. You recommend community service. Does that make him unfit to govern the country? Well, I think there's I've, there's plenty of of U.S. presidents who've been unsavory, yeah, stupid, bit thick, uh, had uh, had objectionable opinions, womanized, were on the periphery of things where people died, and it's never stopped them before. So why pick on him? Yeah, you know, uh, is is Biden a paragon of virtue? No, I really don't think so. Um, his son has been convicted, and he was involved in all kinds That's of. That's his son, though. You can't. It's his son. <laughs> of course it is. But did Dad know what was going on? Well, I don't know. But does it seem likely that he might have known uh, all the Burisma stuff? This, just, you know, and all the stuff about the laptop. Yeah. You just think, what's going on? Is they, the way they're running this, they're going to, they're trying to turn him into a martyr. And it seems to me, the Democrats are going to win the election for Trump. He doesn't need to do anything. Well, I, mean, I don't. Yes. Well, I don't like Trump, but yeah. I just think. No, but we Is we spoke last a, time. Yeah. You know, they've they've got the um, their uh, meeting coming up in mm. August, and, yeah. and I do think he will. Start I think us. you're right. I think I, I think, think that right. yeah. we spoke about Gavin Newsom coming. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 I think um, I, I, at the time I thought, "Is he right?" But I've looked at it since, and I think maybe you are right, mate. Do you think? Because that would be well, a first for me. He, 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 <laughs> Biden isn't getting any sharper, is he? I, I mean, he 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 wrote that letter sort of saying, "I'm I'm definitely going to carry on." I I kind of think if I was and I'm not. Um, did, did you see him write it? No, I did. <laughs> somebody wrote that letter. Hey, somebody wrote that letter. I mean, Some, somebody know. wrote a letter, and no, no, I, but nobody writes. Presidents don't write their own speeches. I suspect that presidents don't write their own letters, their own letters the, which say, the, "I'm not senile." Yeah. Yeah, well, it might have been his doctor then. I don't know. Um, God knows. I know, but I kind of, I mean, I, I, even if you're arguing that he's not, um, anyone who's come into contact with dementia or Alzheimer's or any kind of disease like that, I think will see things in him. And the, the, the problem is it's, it's not just for, you know, the next six months. No, it's for exactly. the next four years. And I kind of just remember seeing my dad um, yeah. over over that kind of period of time. Um, There's no one in the whole Democratic Party who's younger than Biden who's quite good. Nobody. Uh, Why does it have to be him? <laughs> I don't know. And but I, you know, there's the kind of you can imagine some people going, "Oh, you know, we've got to be loyal," and and they voted in the the terms in January. Um, for Biden and oh, you know, loyalty. We should stick with him. But you, yeah, you do kind of think that the it's other a bad side... combination. L loyalty to Biden. It's basically a monkey on a stick voter. Mm. And and then I hate Trump and everything. Anything that Trump is in favour of, he's just the, he's just the devil incarnate. And the so so I'm just going to throw in a um a, a, a wobbler here. Um, what, what about the independent? Is it RFK? Which one? RFK's got up to ten percent. Yeah, uh, he's a weird one. Um, <laughs> They're all fucking weird, weird mate. <laughs> well, that's that's also true. Yeah, and and again, is it his name? Is it the family name, or is he is he really the right person? I mean, there are people in American politics. Who you think, yeah, that, that's yeah, I quite like what they're saying, and there's 270 million of them. Yeah, I mean, come on. Yeah, I yeah, I'm not sure about him either. I mean, luckily, I don't have to vote for any of these. These, well, I went people. Yeah, I went to watch um, but, Civil Civil War the other night. Oh, what do you think? I quite, quite enjoyed it. Yeah, quite it, interesting. It, it is mash of perspectives um and certainly yeah. everyone who stayed at home on the farm that were ignoring ignoring what was going on i mean that's the other thing is is that we all just um leave them to it why why pander to these um stars well, 
you and I aren't leaving them to it in our tiny, tiny, insignificant way. We're trying to do something. I do, well, I, yeah, I think you're the backbone of that. I think I could wobble away at any point. <laughs> Just bored. <laughs> well, let's let's see what people make of this. This what we've said. Yeah. Well, uh, yes. Um, hmm. I do. I, yes, I think. I think there is a. You, a, you think a, things can only get better now? We've got Labour in. I'm more optimistic than I was, but I wouldn't sort of say how low the bar was. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm afraid I'm still feeling all we've done is yeah, ch- ch- allow the uh, allow the two party system to to limp on again. Deck chairs again, isn't it? Yeah, I, I wonder if Labour. The thing about Labour is now they have nowhere to hide. They have such a massive majority. Oh, uh, yeah, anything, same, anything, same anything happens in Scotland, they, mate. Yeah, anything that they do not do in the next four or five years, it was because they didn't want to and they weren't going to because oh, yeah. there's nothing to stop them. So yeah. there's nowhere to hide now. But there's that's no... why I was sort of saying uh, uh, early in the podcast is, is if, if as, as everyone's sort of saying, that the last 14 years has, has been such a disaster and has led us into yeah. this complete mess, then before mm. they leave, um, they need to do something about the... The political system that we've got here. Somebody needs to, like you said, like we've been saying all through this. We we need to talk about it because mm. I mean, you know, if you are a fan of reform and the number of votes, the percentage of votes that they got, and they got four or five seats, I need to check yeah. that. Um, they got twice the number of popular votes as the as the Greens, if I remember rightly. Yeah, who got similar number of seats? So yeah, yeah. I mean, this, I, I I don't know. I've not I've not actually thought it all the way through, and 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 by sort of saying I've not thought it all the way through, the consequence is that it makes it harder for any one power, party to get in, and whether that hinders progress, I don't know. Yeah, well, but I think yeah. what we've got is just it doesn't work and it's not fair. Well, the way I look at it is, Labour Party got four or five years to make it work. Yeah, they've got a massive majority. They've said they want to do all of these things. Fine, make it work. And if you do make it work, then a Labour Party has shown that it 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 can be believed, and two, you have restored faith in the political system we have. If you don't deliver with such a majority. Then you you have to you're going to have to turn around and say oh well actually you can't do these things as a national government because the international order won't let you fine good that's clear yeah. so now we know that national politics is dead and that it wasn't we didn't give our sovereignty away to Europe we didn't get anything back from Europe because we hadn't given them anything yes. we gave it away to the national <laughs> to the international markets fine that's a good that's May, good to get that out in the open mate we're or, just going to carry on for the next yeah or, five or hours got, or, or we've got to say or they've got to say uh we're full of shit that the labor party just talks a good fight when they're in opposition and when they're in charge they're tory light and that's also a good outcome because pr- hopefully if that's what happens then the labor party will be boosted out in the next election and maybe with both tories and labor having discredited themselves having no, soiled no, themselves in no. public yeah, well, no. I don't know how many other alternatives there are. Anyway, like you say, we could witter on forever, and we shouldn't. Yes. Well, I, I'm just just to sort of look, the, the latest on the uh, the Conservative Party. I mean, you might be right, but I, I kind of sort of think that with people like Jeremy Hunt, James Cleverley, Priti Patel, and Suella Braverman being on the on the list of people who might take over as the new leader you might be right yeah, but i, I kind of think you know four years time eight years time you know we're, we're stuck, I, I, stuck I just in hope this. the next election we're not saddled with another choice of tory and labor i just think it's I, you're just voting for a system which was discredited shortly after world war ii yeah and we really need something new because it ain't the entire system is out of step with the world and the problems we face. Yeah. Anyway, that's my. Well, point. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. All on that note. <laughs> on that note, mate. I'll see you on the next one. All right, mate. You take care. You too, bud. Thanks again for taking the time to listen. If you enjoyed that, you can head over to Substack 
or YouTube, maybe leave a review. But also tell us what you think, what you agreed with, what you disagreed with. Thanks a lot. Thanks very much. <laughs>